Our episode today starts with a boy and his girlfriend walking in the rainy weather, watching that strange river. It seems they want to commit suicide. His girlfriend says, come on, my dear, let's die together. They tie their hands together to jump into the river, but by a stroke of luck, a car hits them both and they die instantly. The scene then shifts to another place where a young man named Sensi is lying on the ground. He wakes up and says, what is this strange place? Is this the afterlife? He looks at a picture and says, it's really beautiful. Suddenly, he is surprised by a princess who says, welcome adventurer. He asks her who she is and she tells him her name is Anity and she is a guide for those who arrive in this place. The adventurer starts looking around the strange place and looks out from a balcony in the castle. Anity tells him, this world is different from your original world. You have been chosen to be transported to this place, the strange continent covered in darkness, so big, to restore its light. Therefore, my friend, you must become the hero. The young man is surprised and says, I've been transported to this strange world. Why me? What a huge bother. The princess says, please listen to me, adventurer. You were chosen among many people. He doesn't pay attention to her words and takes some sleeping pills, collapsing to the ground. The girl then purifies the toxins using a technique called detoxification. The adventurer wakes up again and asks her, why did you do that? Leave me alone. She tells him, adventurer, you must become the hero who saves the world. You have a great destiny ahead of you. But the so-called hero doesn't care and says, I'm looking for a good place to die. I don't understand any of what you're saying. I'm not a hero. Leave me alone. He then starts taking more pills again. She said to him, my dear, you are now in another world. The truck that hit you and your girlfriend has brought you here. That truck is known as the truck of the other world. You can say it's a means of transport. When the truck hits a number of chosen people, it allows them to be transported to the other world. This is a global transport service. But he tells her he doesn't care about this because the truck disrupted what was supposed to be the happiest moment of his life. The double suicide with his girlfriend. The girl then spoke to herself saying, well, since that's the case, he must be surprised when he sees his stats and that he has been granted a tremendous power that no one else has and he didn't have before. When she looked at his stats, she was shocked and said, how is he even alive? I think he's dead. I also believe he is very weak, he said to her. I'm leaving now. So she grabbed his hand and said, wait, you're right. You must have been brought to this world by mistake. He is so weak. I've never seen anyone transported to another world this week. Our friend feels sad and says to her, I'm leaving now, she told him. You don't have the qualifications to live in this world. He said to her, I know my luck well. I am a miserable and pessimistic person and will always be an unqualified person. Leave me alone. She said to him, wait, please. If you go outside, you will encounter big monsters and you will be killed immediately. He thanked her and told her not to worry about him. He was just looking for a place to die. Anity was very surprised and said, this man is extremely strange. She then told us about her past, where she was proud to guide those who came from other worlds. Meeting the inhabitants of other worlds excited her. But at some point, she closed her heart and became a woman who fawned over heroes repeatedly. We then see Anity running after Sensei, asking him not to leave before completing the task required of him at least. Sensei looks at her and tells her that his profession has been writing since he was born and he is not good at doing anything else. He then says to her, goodbye, miss with the beautiful ears and leaves. We then see Sensei in the garden, mocking and saying, another world. I can't read anything, but I know I won't find a cafe here. Suddenly, he hears a voice in his head saying, you have discovered the great plains of Ayastan and earned five experience points. Sensei holds his head and says, I know who you are, but please stop talking directly into my mind. I suffer from migraines. The voice then tells him that he has leveled up to level two. Suddenly, Sensei hears a girl scream. He looks behind him and sees a giant tree holding a girl by her hands and lifting her up. This tree is called the Tree of Death. The girl looks at Sensei and asks him to help and save her from the Tree of Death. Sensei thinks to himself, I meet many people with strange ears today, but all the women are very beautiful. He asks her, can I write a story about you? The girl is surprised by his question and asks him to hurry and save her. Sensei approaches the tree and tells the girl he can't reach her. She asks him, don't you have a weapon or any magical spell? Then we see the tree of death wrapping its branch around Sensei's neck and lifting him up as well. Sensei looks at the girl and welcomes her, telling her they will die together. 
The girl tells him that the trees of death have the ability to absorb and steal the life force of their captives, and they will die within a few minutes. Sensei is delighted and says, this is good news. The girl is bewildered by his reactions. We then see the tree of death starting to drain the souls of Sensei and the girl. Suddenly, something very strange happens. The monstrous tree begins to die until it completely disappears, and the girl and Sensei fall to the ground. The girl is astonished by what happened to the tree and the miracle that allowed her to survive. Sensei is very upset because he failed to die once again. We then learn that when the tree was absorbing Sensei's energy, it suffered greatly, taking about 300 damage from Sensei's poison. Without any effort on his part, he managed to kill the tree. The girl thinks that the young man made the tree kill itself by absorbing his poison instead of his life force. She says, your level has risen to level two. What's wrong with you? You claim to be weak, but you are actually strong. He doesn't pay any attention to her and starts smoking, feeling very frustrated. He says to the girl, this is the usual for me. I wish for death and end up surviving in the end. So far, I've tried to die five times and none of them went as planned. The girl says to him, anyway, I don't know the reason for your frustration, but I'm happy to be alive. She then thanks him for saving her and invites him to her home. She starts to shake his hand and asks for his name, holding his hand to come with her. Sensei imagines his girlfriend Sachin when they wanted to leave this world together. He realizes that Sachin has also come to this world. The girl gets annoyed and tells him that her name is not Sachin. He leaves the girl and starts walking, thinking about his girlfriend Sachin. The girl gets annoyed by this and by him repeating the name Sachin, she follows him and Sensei thinks to himself, I have just found a reason to live in this strange world. I will find you wherever you are in this world and then we will commit double suicide together. On the other side, we see the queen who summons Sensei to this world praying for his safety and that he won't get hurt. She also prays that they will meet again. Suddenly her wish comes true and the adventurer enters to see her once more. She gets very happy and rushes to him, but is shocked to see a girl with him. She says to him, why did we come to this place? Let's leave quickly. The blonde girl wonders who the girl with him is. Sensei tells her, there's something I want to ask you. I'm actually looking for a woman named Sachin. Do you have any idea where she might be? The blonde girl gets very upset and says, another woman you want? Then he leaves without finding out where his girlfriend is and continues searching for her with the other girl. She reassures him, it's okay, Sensei. She must be somewhere. My house is still far away, so how about we stop in the city of Castle Roth? She takes his hand, and then the blonde woman comes, very angry and scolds her, saying, how dare you hold a man's hand in public? How can you be so shameless? The other girl feels a lot of pain and asks, why did you come with us anyway? The blonde woman is embarrassed to answer. The other girl understands and says, I get it. You love Sensei, don't you? The woman who summons Sensei tries to defend herself, saying, my motive isn't so impure. As a woman of faith, I have a responsibility to protect this weak person from another world. The other girl is surprised that Sensei is from another world and thinks he is very strong. The summoner says, don't lie. He's not strong, which is why I must stay by his side. The other girl tells her that he killed a tree of death with one hit and saved her life. The summoner is shocked to hear this and is upset that they have grown so close feeling that the girl has stolen him from her. Meanwhile, we see Sensei finding a coffin. He is very happy because he has been feeling dizzy since he arrived in this world. He tells them that he will sleep a little and asks them to wake him when they reach the city. He then starts sleeping in the coffin. The summoner girl, Anity, tries to pull the coffin, but she can't continue because it's too heavy. On the other side, we see his girlfriend Sachin standing, watching the sunset and waiting for her friend's return. Will they meet again? This is what we will find out in the upcoming episodes. So stay tuned, but please subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell to get all the new updates. The episode begins with Tama and Anati carrying the coffin containing Sensei, but it's very heavy. Tama gets frustrated and angrily tells Sensei to get up and walk on his own, but there's no response from him. Tama wonders if he's dead. Anati reassures her that he's fine after using her ability to check his health. He's sleeping peacefully, she tells Tama that they are almost at the castle and should keep moving. We then see Sensei in the coffin, thinking about his beloved. He says, I will find you for sure, Satchan, and then we'll commit suicide together. The scene transitions to their arrival in the city. 
Tama tells Sensei to get out of the coffin because they've arrived. Sensei exits the coffin and realizes that this new world he's been transported to isn't so bad, yet he suggests they head to the castle to meet the king. The scene changes to the castle where we see King Thomas and his daughter, Princess Charlotte welcoming Sensei and his friends. The king tells them to rest in the castle rooms as their journey was very long and they need to recuperate. They are surprised by the king's generosity. The king explains that he loves reading adventurous stories and wants them to share their travel experiences with him. Sensei tells the king he will recount his experience of sleeping in a coffin. The king is very surprised and asks him if he is threatening him. Anity tries to change the subject and tells the king that his daughter, Princess Charlotte, is very beautiful. The king tells her that Charlotte will get married soon. Then, we see two warriors entering the hall. The king introduces them as the warrior Gomez and the singer Otto, the wandering love singer. He tells them that due to the influence of the angry demon king, the activity of monsters has increased. However, the king is too old to deal with this problem himself. So he decided that one of them would marry Charlotte. But Charlotte has not yet chosen one of them. The king then asks Sensei, Tama, and Ananati for their opinions on the marriage. Should Charlotte choose Gomez or Otto? Sensei tells the king that Charlotte should marry Otto. Because this decision will impact his daughter's future, and it is not something that should be decided by anyone but Charlotte herself. She is the one who should make this decision. He then tells the king, You are a terrible tyrant and unfit to be a king. Sensei leaves and Tama and Anati apologize profusely to the king for Sensei's rudeness. They explain that Sensei is from another world and does not understand proper etiquette. The king tells them to calm down. The scene transitions to the night. We see Sensei sitting in his room, unable to sleep. Anati asks him if he is okay. He tells her that he cannot sleep. Anati then asks him, who is Sachan? Then suddenly, Anati angrily pulls back the cover and finds Tama. She asks her why she is sleeping next to their master sensei. Tama tells her that she felt cold, so she slept next to him. They start yelling at each other, and Sensei leaves them and walks around the castle. He finds Princess Charlotte looking at the sky. Sensei approaches her and comments that the view of the sky and the lake is beautiful. Then he tells her that he wants to jump into the lake, drown, and die. The princess is very surprised and tells him that he is very disturbed and wants to commit suicide. Sensei responds that she is more disturbed than he is. She tells him that she cannot choose between Gomez and Otto. Since Gomez came to the castle, he has become one of the strongest warriors, and her father trusts him very much. On the other hand, Otto is her childhood friend, who used to write and sing songs for her. Sensei tells her that she is a very kind girl and cares about her father. He shares that his own life has been very difficult, and he has tried to commit suicide many times, causing a lot of trouble for his father and family, but he never asked anyone to choose his life path for him, not even once. He advises her to do the same and not let anyone decide for her, but she must make the choice herself. Then he leaves her. The next morning, everyone is in the king's room. The king announces that his daughter Charlotte has chosen whom she will marry, and he asks Sensi and his friends to be witnesses. Anity thinks the princess will choose Gomez, but Tama believes she will choose Otto. Then we see the princess walk towards Gomez and Otto and say, I have made my decision. I will commit double suicide with this man. She then holds Sensi's hand and chooses him. His Majesty the King and her father are shocked by this choice, and everyone else is also stunned that she wants to commit suicide with this young man. We see Anity faint and fall to the ground, then Princess Charlotte speaks and says, Traveler, after talking to you, I thought deeply and realized something. Every time I felt sad, Otto would write and sing songs for me. But when I thought about it, I realized he came even when I wasn't sad, and he was also annoying all night. I think he just wanted someone to perform his new songs for. Also, I can't marry Mr. Gomez because he has a somewhat unpleasant smell. His Majesty the King intervenes, shocked by her words and tells her not to be silly and to choose a husband. She responds, You are the fool, father. Why would you marry me off to someone without asking my opinion first? I don't want to get married in the first place. In the end, no one considered my feelings except this person, Sensei. She then holds Sensei's hands and says, You were the only one who asked for my opinion, Sensei, and respected it. Sensei replies, I understand. That is why you decided not to marry and to commit double suicide with me. 
Suddenly, the armored man removes his helmet in a fit of anger and says, Did you say my smell is unpleasant? You have a sensitive nose. Then, this man begins transforming into a massive muscular bull. Everyone is shocked to discover that he was disguised as the Demon King's servant, Gomez. His plan was to take over the kingdom by becoming its ruler and then offering it to the Demon King. He didn't expect the princess to see through his disguise. Sensei asks her, did you know his true identity? She responds, not at all. I just said his smell was unpleasant because it was. Gomez becomes increasingly annoyed and says, given the current situation, I no longer need the throne. I'll just kill you all. And Tama tries to wake up her friend Anity saying, this is not the time to lose consciousness. But Anity does not respond at all. The soldiers try to protect the king and queen, but Gomez strikes them down and they all fall to the ground. A large rock was about to hit Anati, but Tama saves her just in time, moving her to another place. Tama then attacks the monster Gomez, but her blow has no effect on him. At this moment, Otto starts supporting Tama with a song, singing, fight, brave one. Tama believes this is some kind of power-up, but nothing happens. Sensei, however, gets lost in the new song. The monster Gomez begins to attack Tama, but she dodges his attack and strikes him with a cat kick, which has no effect. Tama tries to hit him with all her strength, but he slashes her face. Tama is shocked by the strength of his horns. They are not only very tough, but also sharp. She decides to pour all her strength into her next attack. The monster taunts her, saying his iron horns will cut her to pieces. Sensa intervenes, calling him a cow and apologizing cruelly for interrupting, but saying Gomez needs to fight them first. This angers the monster even more. Sensei continues saying, he and the princess want to die first by those magnificent horns. Now that the princess is free from her foolish father's grasp, her only wish is to commit double suicide with him. Therefore, the monster should fulfill her wish. Sensei calls him a cow again, which infuriates Gomez further. He tells them that if they wish to die so badly, he will grant their wishes and kill them first. Then the king and finally burn down the city and kill all the citizens of the kingdom. Sensei responds that Gomez can do whatever he wants because they only care about dying. Then, Sensei looks at Princess Charlotte and tells her he will fulfill her wish now. The monster charges at them to kill them. Charlotte becomes very nervous, but then snaps out of it deciding she doesn't want to die. She wants to live and protect the people of this kingdom. Hearing her say this, Sensei throws her aside to prevent the monster from harming her. Suddenly, Anity appears and uses a sturdy light barrier spell on Sensei to protect him from the monster's strike. Anity appears just in time and uses a sturdy light barrier to save Sensei from the monster, saying, I won't allow you to die as long as I'm alive and by your side. After that, Tama assists by using her powerful cat strike, attacking and knocking Gomez into the lake. Tama thanks Anity for saving them from the massive monster. Otto then appears and says, I will turn your friendship into a song. The king then speaks with Charlotte, apologizing. I can't believe what I was trying to do without considering your feelings. I am a very failed king and also a failed father. He begs her to forgive him. She lovingly replies, I want you to allow me to talk to you about the kingdom and about us. The king hugs Charlotte and they cry together. Sensei and his friends look at them with love and sadness and Sensei says, I failed to die once again. Afterward, we go to the castle where Charlotte talks to the knights, saying, Monsters have appeared near the southern gate. The royal forces must go there immediately to exterminate them to protect the kingdom. I rely on you all very much. The scene shifts to Anity and Tama. Anity says, Charlotte made a very bold decision to become queen at the age of 16. It won't be easy for her. Sensei responds, she made the decision herself. There's nothing to worry about. Women rely on themselves well. And that's how today's episode ends. Stay tuned for the upcoming episodes and don't forget to subscribe and activate the notification bell to receive all new updates. Our episode begins with Annette and Tama walking together. Tama tells her, I'm very hungry, and they take a break with Tama lying on the ground. Sensi opens the coffin and asks them why they stopped. Annette tells him it's time to eat and gives him bread. He asks her if she has boiled tofu. She says no, but offers to look for it in the city and bring it for him. Then, Annette opens the map and Tama asks how much longer until they reach home. Annette tells her it will be a few days and mentions that they will stop at the second temple. 
She explains that usually people from other worlds arrive at one of the four temples and then head to the Demon King's castle. However, Sensai's goal isn't to defeat the Demon King, but to find Sachan. Therefore, they need to visit all four temples to gather information. Tama is surprised because this means they will travel around the world. Annette confirms this and reveals she actually doesn't want Sensei to face the Demon King or be exposed to danger. Tama then asks, do you love Sensei, Annette? Annette is very surprised and tells her, no, it's not like that. She explains that Sensei showed her the light when she lost hope in her work, and now it's her turn to help him. Tama asks what Annette will do if this girl named Sachin is Sensei's beloved and, more importantly, if they will be allowed into the temple since Annette left her previous job to come here. Annette assures her that the head priest of the second temple is her friend. At this moment, Sensei comes out of the coffin and smokes a cigarette. Annette continues and says she didn't leave her position without informing anyone. She had Elfie deliver her resignation. Suddenly, a creature called Elfie appears and stands on Sensei's head, causing him pain. Annette gets angry because Elfie always harms everyone. She grabs him and asks if he delivered her resignation. Elfie pulls out her resignation letter from his mouth. Annette is furious and asks why he returned if he didn't complete his task. Elfi then stands in front of Sensei and tells him that he has decided his new name will be Milos, not Elfi. Milos flies around Sensei, who then goes back into the coffin and closes it. Annette becomes very anxious because she left her job without proper notice and her resignation was not delivered. Suddenly, Milo starts behaving strangely and Annette is puzzled by his actions. Out of nowhere, a huge dragon appears. Annette wonders why a dragon, considered the strongest monster in the world, is here. Suddenly, a girl appears behind them and says, Stop, Ryuka. She approaches the dragon and calms it down easily. The girls are astonished by her ability to tame the dragon. Annette asks, Who are you? The girl looks at them and warns that the area is full of dangerous beasts and they should leave immediately. Sensei then emerges from the coffin and asks if it's time to eat. Tamo apologizes to the girl for scaring her with Sensei, explaining that he's an odd person from another world. When the girl realizes he's from another world, she removes her cloak and declares she will kill him as she kills anyone who comes from another world. She starts using her magic to attack them. Annette creates a barrier to protect them from her attacks. The girl overpowers them, causing the ground to collapse. We see the three heroes on the ground, exhausted. Tama and Annette get up and decide they will protect Sensei no matter what. Suddenly, Tama and Annette feel they can't move. A mark appears in the evil girl's neck, and Annette realizes that this girl is the furious demon queen. Sensei stands up and tells her to stop. He explains that Annette and Tama are not from other worlds and have no part in this. He approaches her and says, I am from another world. I am your enemy. Do with me as you wish. I am ready to die at any time. In that moment, Walila uses her power and strikes a very strong blow, so strong that her hand goes through to the other side, causing blood to spill everywhere, and Sensei falls to the ground dead. She then introduces herself as Waldelia and leaves the place, but something very strange happens. After she stabs him, Sensei rises again, placing his hand on the wound and says, that girl stabbed me. She must hold a very strong hatred. He then says, I once wanted to stab someone too, but my stab was different. I reached the point of sending a threatening message to him. While Delia is surprised and says, I don't understand anything. What are you talking about? But he continues saying, at that time, I lost my mind in front of intense hatred. He then approaches her and looks into her eyes, finding them very sad and asks, why are you sad, miss? She quickly summons the dragon Ryuka, then jumps and escapes quickly, very surprised by what happened. It is in the evening when it was extremely cold and rainy, the three return to the palace, carried by the creature Milos. The princess is surprised by what she sees, then lifts Anit and says to her, Hold on, hold on, sister. Anit replies, Don't worry about me. Help Sensi. Then the princess tells everyone to bring all the healing potions they have and to summon all the priests and doctors in the city. The next morning, we move to the market to that man, the pig, while we see Sensei, who has slightly recovered, buying a bottle of poison from him. This poison is extremely dangerous, capable of killing monsters, let alone if used on a human. But the surprise is that he opens the bottle and drinks it. Everyone yells at him, what are you doing? You fool! You were healed miraculously by God's grace and now you drink poison again. 
He replies, I feel unwell and in great pain in my stomach. At that point, Tama gets angry, grabs the bottle, and throws it to the ground. Meanwhile, we see the princess and Anit talking about Sensei's complete recovery. Anit thanks her, saying that if it weren't for her help, he would have been dead, and that she will definitely repay this debt somehow. Then she asks her, do you know a girl from another world named Sachan? Ayesha tells her that she does not know her as she hasn't come to their temple yet. She scolds her and says, don't worry about such things. But why are you traveling with someone from another world? I was also surprised when I heard that you resigned from your job without notice, but I was also relieved. I felt that you were too pure for that job, but traveling with someone from another world. You know very well that these people from other worlds are very evil, with no heart at all. They are given powers known as Ifts to defeat the Demon King, yet they use these excessively powerful abilities for their own interest. At that moment, a jester approaches them and says, What's this? Are you two arguing? Come on, fairy. Get those frowns off your faces and enjoy with me. I'm from another world, and I promise I will help you a lot. My ability is to multiply money, isn't that amazing? Aisha gets very angry and hits him with the money, saying, You fool, we are talking and you interrupted our privacy. He quickly runs away, saying, You will pay for this, miss. Then she tells her, see? These people from other worlds are all evil like that. But the other one tells her that Sensei is different from the rest of the people from other worlds. However, Aisha insists that he is evil, claiming that she can see it in their faces. She can reveal the true nature of people just by looking at them. She warns that staying with him will destroy her. But she replies, if it weren't for Sensei, I wouldn't have become the person I am today. At that moment, Sensei enters, asking for some money to buy some medicine. She tells her that Sensei has no talent or power, yet he risked his life in front of the angry demon king to protect us. Aisha is surprised and says, what are you talking about? The angry demon king was defeated by someone from another world seven days ago. Aisha tells her friend that the angry demon king was defeated by someone from a different world seven days ago. On the other hand, we go to the Demon King's castle and see that the person who killed him is sitting on his throne. This dragon starts crying over the Demon King and this person says to him, calm down. Your master won't return no matter how much you bark. I've gotten rid of him. We see the Demon King's daughter outside the castle, very sad over the loss of her father, out of grief. She has been killing everyone who comes from another world. On the other hand, we switch to Tama who is shocked that the angry demon king has been defeated. Annette tells her that Aisha received a letter from the church headquarters yesterday, stating that the demon king was defeated by someone from another world seven days ago. Annette rejoices as peace has finally been restored to the world. Tama is overjoyed and thanks this person from another world for saving them from the tyranny of the demon king. However, Tama suddenly remembers and asks, but who was that girl? Annette shares this question saying, didn't Sensei come to this world seven days ago? Annette responds, that's right, I'll never forget that day. It changed my life. Tama tells her, I didn't mean that at all, but I am puzzled by the question of why Sensei came to this world when there is no longer a demon king here. Suddenly, Sensei tears up a piece of paper, throws it into the air and falls to the ground saying, maybe I'll die here. A man who spent his life tearing pages of mistakes from his pen carved that on my tombstone. The girls wonder what happened to him, and he tells them all it is. I thought of writing down the events that have occurred since I came to this world, but I find it difficult to write, and now I feel hopeless because of that. Annette becomes very happy and says, Did you describe our first meeting, Sensei? He replies, I didn't write anything about you, which shocks her greatly, and she cries. Sensei continues, saying, when I met the Demon Queen and Delia, I felt a strange surge of creativity. I pray that something else happens to excite my senses. Annette tells him, what do you think about going to the city to relax and consider our future? There are some things I'd like to buy for you, Sensei. They indeed go out, and Annette buys him a very strong silver shield that reflects beginner level spells. This is suitable for you, Sensei, as we never know when we might be attacked or by whom. I don't want to see you suffer again, she says. Tama, displeased with the shield, tells her, it seems he is suffering now. Sensei tells them, this oppressive feeling isn't so bad. Annette places a helmet on his head and tells him, we are going shopping, don't move without us. People begin to notice him in this state and are very surprised. Isha is shocked to see him there and asks, what are you doing here, stranger from another world? He replies, 
I was seeking new excitement. She says, it doesn't matter. I wanted to talk to you anyway. Listen, stranger from another world, Annette will stay with me from now on. She has always been a very pure girl, and this makes her trust people easily. But staying with someone from another world will surely make her unhappy. As her friend, I have to intervene. So please dissolve your group with Annette. Sensei tells her, the decision is Annette's. Whether she wants to accompany me or not, not yours. She is not a caged bird. Why are you so sure she will be unhappy? She replies, because you are from another world. And let me be clear, I never trust people from another world. Suddenly, a person arrives riding a wolf. This person, named Suzuki, is also from another world. Suzuki speaks and tells them that a few days ago, the angry demon king was defeated by a group of people from another world. My choice people, peace has come to your world, he announces. Everyone cheers and shouts, long live the people from another world. Suzuki seizes this opportunity and says, the ones who brought you peace are the people from another world who risked their lives in battle. Thus begins a new era for this world, led by us, the people from another world. It will be known as the era of the great hero, and I will rule this city. If you understand what I am saying, kneel, you fools. Tama says, the era of the great hero. Who does he think he is? The clown from another world points at Annette and says, this is the fairy who acted violently against me. Suzuki, furious, dismounts from the wolf and says, she acted violently against someone from another world. Annette tells him, this is a misunderstanding. We didn't commit any violence. Suzuki, still enraged, goes to her places his hand on her head and says, be good. Will he be able to harm her? What does Suzuki want? This is what we will find out in the next episode, so stay tuned. But please subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell to receive all new updates.